Let's give this a go. Come on. I get stuck with. I'm this close to canning it. I'm just being like, this, I'm done. Yes, you heard that right. Your ears are not playing tricks on you. I have one barge ticket in my back pocket, but I'm going to multiple Queensland islands. But I'm not doing this one alone. I have a special guest with me. She's blonde, she's bad, she speaks South Afrikaans, and she drives a Hilux. I'm so excited for this hectic trip, a trip that Red Dirt has never done before. Being the one out of Bree and I that loves touring, this was an adventure that's right up my alley. But I'm not that familiar with the Queensland area, so I rallied my friends, Nass and Andy, who I know know the island a lot better than me. We decided to hit up Stradbroke Island to kick it off. Everything was looking perfect and we set sail on the barge for a great day ahead. Alright, one, what's your name? Naz. Two, what car do you drive? An 80. Three, what's your occupation at Red Dirt? Uh, I've been coordinator. And four, what's your favourite continental breakfast type? Done, she had no answer. Moving on. Alright, one, what's your name? Andrew. Two, what do you drive? Is it here? No. Just no. Mm, uh, I don't have a three, what's your occupation at Red Dirt? Uh, I don't have one. Why? I'm um, a stay at home dad. How many children do you have? None. None. And what's your favourite continental breakfast? Couldn't tell you. <laughs> Couldn't tell you. <laughs> That's what I thought. A man of many words. Alright, everyone is aired down, ready to go. It is pretty hot, so the sand is getting softer and softer, but my Toyos will not let me down, and I'm in front, so when Nas gets bogged because she has shit tyres, I will be able to get her out. Let's hit this track. It should be about one hour. It's a little bit long, but it's definitely, it's meant to be beautiful, so I'm looking forward to it. Let's put the drone in the air, actually. We'll show you what we're seeing right now. One of our first stops was Trap or Track Lookout and I had the tinny on the back and one of the main problems was we couldn't get the tinny off because we lost the trailer lock key. It was very hard. If you've driven the Gala Rocks, think of that, but softer and steeper. As we set sail up this hill, things turned bad really quickly. We're just trying to turn a corner on this little track. Um, we cannot take the boat off because we don't have the key. Don't laugh, we don't have the key. We need a for that We've, one. We literally lost it. And as we're coming around the corner, it's too much on the sand. Not enough run up, it's not a spot for a run up. Try two things, we're gonna air her down a little bit more. I'm gonna put just some max tracks, just to see if I can get her over the hard bit. Um, let her car keep traction, because the car's not the problem. It's literally the boat stuck around the other side of the corner being dragged a bit sideways. Give this a go, come on. sand it's giving her three four meter run up then she'll hit the max tracks and then she'll be able to get up this last bit of hill again this only seems to happen when the boat is around a corner it's on corners it's like the biggest anchor in the world we couldn't even take the tow hitch off because that was locked too otherwise you're probably yelling at us and screaming and saying take the tow hitch off but we couldn't we thought about it but we couldn't <laughs> so at this point we are way too deep into the hill and we figured out that the boat cannot come off the N80. So there is no turning back, there is no reversing and our options are becoming slimmer and slimmer and slimmer and the sweat is starting to kick in. We're very close to the first checkpoint. We might not actually be able to get all the way to the top of the hill. I know it doesn't seem, it's quite deceiving, but the hill is getting steeper and steeper. If we can just get her to the opening just there, we're gonna call it there, but it's gonna be turning that car around once we get it in there. That's off camber, and that's a full U-turn, so huh, I'm sweating as it is. 
<laughs> anyway, she's got this. All right. Bigger. The hill gets so much bigger. Are you kidding me? So I've run back to where we've got NASA's car as close as possible. She's bogged again, but um, we're 90% to the end. We're in the in the turnaround bay. But I don't want to risk cars getting hot and blah 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 because I can, and because my car is still on the dirt. And just because I can, I'm going to take the jet ski off. There is no point just taking it up that kilometer to only have the same problem as trying to turn around to try to get back down. Jet ski, come on, get in the spot, get in the spot. Reversing jet skis, reversing anything in sand, it just has an absolute mind of its own. Okay. Coffee, he's on it. All right, we need to get this. Come on, Hilux. I'm just gonna use every tool that I have. I might even just go into the bigger tune. If I get stuck with To be honest, Nasus cut the sand yeah. open, so I had no issues other than the corner. Well, now I'm sliding, which is f***ing annoying. I've come out of the track that I've made, and I'm sliding sideways, which is shit, so I'm just going to air down to something stupidly low. Because I have to get out. I have to get out of this. Um, and then I'm going to max tracks the shit out of it. Because I'm the support vehicle and now I'm... So I'm just going to reverse back to get on the hard stuff so Bridget will be able to come back a bit and try like get more traction so she can maybe pull me up or just so she can not be bogged. See how that goes. Okay, I'm aired down. We have four max tracks now. A saber winch that doesn't work. Do you know how stupid I feel for not having my winch like in running right now? I won't carry on about it. We'll do something about it. I'm gonna reverse way back um, to the only section that's got some sort of hard sand, and then boot it and try to get my car all the way to the top in one run. I'm gonna be completely honest. I got a run up from the bottom, which was. 800 meters with speed and I didn't get it so I'm not sure what 80 meters is gonna give me but I may as well try I'm not confident aircon off seatbelt on for this one I really wish the camera did justice how steep this is Oh, why am I getting emotional? I feel so stupid. I don't have Brie, so a lot of the pressure of all of this is falling on me. Not that it's pressure, these trips are fun. I've got my friend here with a boat on that she can't take off because I don't have the fucking key. So I needed my car to do this so that I can support her and snatch her out if it comes to that. And if I made any mistakes and it didn't get out, what options do I leave my friend, you know? I think for once, hopefully you can see that it's doing justice. <laughs> We're putting this in. I don't care if the wind has cooked the audio. Look at this hill, bro. So commit to the tire tracks for as long as you feel comfortable and then you can start to veer off. Don't make any sudden adjustments. Yeah, sounds good. I can do that. Turn the car around, face it downhill, yeah. and then we'll take a break. Yep, really slowly though, slower than that. Holy 
Holy shit, that four hours? Should be about one hour. Yeah. How long have we been here? The exit turn on camera, because hell, this has been a hard day. All right, Nas, when you're ready. Beautiful. After our four hour recovery, we managed to get ourselves to some successful positions. My car had no jet ski on it and it was at the top of the hill at the lookout and Nasa's car had done a 180 and was facing downhill at the halfway point. But I couldn't leave this lookout without taking a look at it. So I forced everyone to walk up the hill with me, climb on top of the car and enjoy the tripod track lookout. tripod track lookout which was an adventure and a half by itself I decided to take Bridget to Point Lookout because it has a sick pub there overlooks the water and we definitely needed a drink or two after that experience <laughs> cheers to you you deserve it you've worked hard you sitting there watching this you worked really hard to get to this point in the episode you deserve a drink Pub was stunning, I have to say. We loved it, it was in the sun, and it was exactly what we needed. Until the weather gods decided to completely screw us, the sky turned grey, it started raining sideways, and it's safe to say that the rest of the day turned terrible very, very quickly. Nas, this weather is no good. I know we've hit the beach. It's nice to be down at the beach. I was very motivated for a swim, but now that I'm down here, I'm not sure. I had a look at the radar, I'm gonna tell you. I think the weather has turned on us bad for the rest of the day. Yeah, this rain is not going well at all. Like the water looks so clear. Like if it was sunny, it'd be an un unreal day. We could have just gone for a swim, but it has just turned so bad. Let's find camp, um, nestle in somewhere and- Get cozy and just wait for this rain to pass. Sounds like a plan might have to get Netflix started. You know Red Dead too well. When it rains, we go to bed early and watch Netflix. You're welcome to join me in my rooftop if you want. You can just leave Andy behind. I've never stress set up so fast in my whole life. Because if you saw what I saw on the radar, shit's about to get really freaky. While there's a tiny weather gap, let me give you a bit of a piece to explain what the hell is going on. Um, and I'm just gonna be really transparent and honest, the weather is terrible. I thought it was just the island patch, which islands can do, and it seems to have set in with the tiny bit of reception that I have, I can see that it's not going away. So we've bunkered down, we have a gazebo, we have the awning, we've put out everything that we've literally got to try to protect ourselves for the night with the wind and push back from the beach as much as we can, but still in our designated beach zone. We're gonna have a warm feed. I think I wanna feed the team with a bit of ravioli. Everyone deserves a warm feed, everyone's really wet. Uh, and then get some rest for the night. So if it doesn't rain, we'll keep filming. But if it does rain, we might see you in the morning, AKA too much alcohol and friends. See you there. <laughs> Like the early bird I am, I got up and I made everyone else get up with me so that we could do the big jump from Stradbroke to South Morton Island, which was very, very difficult. As we set off, everything was actually going perfectly fine. Within two minutes, it became the scariest jet skiing experience I have ever done. So we're gonna do a quick packing of the boat. The sun has just started to rise, but that's okay. A quick packing of the boat, put everything into dry bags, grab the camera gear, 
and then venture off on a one hour 31 kilometers one hour in partially open water on a trix jet ski with two women on it my dad would be so proud and my mum would be going like this yeah i'm excited i'm excited and hopefully a miracle happens and we get good weather we won't but hopefully that does happen so let's pack and let's go We got out there and that was the worst situation I've ever been put in. Like, it was scary. Like, I would never go on the team more than 14 knots and going out there around 25. It was too much to really handle, but we did it. I think for the first time in my life, I actually understand what they mean by that. Jumping from Stradbroke to Morton, you couldn't film it. I almost wish that we could have shown you how rough it truly was, but having someone on the back of my trick ski and fighting that much swell and wind, I really needed to focus. And I'm sure Andy feels the same on the tinny too. Trying to get the gear to Morton, feeling like we were halfway, too far to turn back, but just far enough to keep going forward. The anxiety was high, but we had to commit to it and make sure that our safety came first. I can tell you we were very grateful once our feet hit land on Morton Island. taking my breath away. It was better than what I imagined it to be and I was having the time of my life. I didn't even notice that Nass wasn't there, Andy wasn't there, the boat wasn't there, the jet ski wasn't there because my head was down until I felt that the tide was turning and I was being sucked through the wreck quite quickly. Because of the diving gear that I had on and I'm a little bit I don't want to say experienced but I've put some hours into diving lately I was able to handle it and I just kept bopping around this wreck having a really good time, didn't notice that everything was falling apart at the water's surface. There were they out there with the sea. But I realised they're way out there. What happened? Maybe we lost that car. I literally just came up and everyone was gone. I just saw Andy pull a knife on the boat and cut the anchor. So something's obviously wrong. Never pulled a knife before to cut the anchor, but um, as it went away, we just um, caused a little bit of damage to the boat and the inside, throwing things around. And we had to get the ski was tied on the back, so they were kind of touching together and very, um, very scary time. Only just made it out. Zach was trying to help us too, and I was trying to jump on the ski at this point to go grab Bridget, but then the ski capsized as well, and then tried to jump on it again, and it capsized again, and I didn't have the key on me, so the jet ski kept going, and Zach had to swim after it. <laughs> So now it's the time of day where we need to find camp. Again, another thing not working on our side is that the swell was just picking up and picking up and picking up. Especially when you're trying to get close to the shore, we were having waves breaking against all of the gear. And we realized that beaching it was on the only option that we had. We're in a bit of a sticky situation. Um, we're trying to get the boat off of the water. So we've got these nice guys helping us. We got some snatchies attached to the boat and we're literally just gonna like drag it up on the beach for the night because the conditions are just so bad. This isn't for the edit, this is just for fun. Giant Brody. I don't know what's going on with my luck, but 
this episode is not only bad but dangerous. It's like tree downwind. Ugh. I'm this close to canning it. I'm just being like, this, I'm done. So impressed and grateful yet again to see the four-wheel driving community work together and help us get out of a really sticky situation. Six people come out from the camping ground and they give us a much needed hand. We ended up dragging all the gear all the way up into the land so that we could go to sleep that night knowing that our gear wasn't going to break or get washed away. So I just have to say to people in the four-wheel driving community, helping people out that are in distress is something that I will thank you for, anyone would thank you for, for a very, very long time. Thank you so much for helping, yeah, honestly. No you have not, like, you don't understand what it means. Thank you. Thank you for helping. We need more people like you, honestly. Thank you. Absolute 300% red dirt fashion. Something has to go wrong, but this is next level something going wrong. This is basically hell breaking loose, all within a span of two hours today. Um, but we are safe. We had to get out of the water very, very quickly. Crazy storm came that made us feel like the hell was coming to earth. Uh, so we pulled up on the ship, we rushed straight to camp knowing that we needed to bunker down, but no anchor or anchor rope was gonna be long enough to be able to have the gear be out past the swell that was coming in and then be anchored up on the shore and not affect any of the forward driving path. And now we're safe and we just need to get the things through this little inland track to camp. But I'm annoyed because when you look behind me, it looks like a beautiful sunny day. So the weather has turned back to being good, which I'm not upset about. It's just frustrating because we've gone through a lot of admin and a lot of damages in our hearts and with our gear, uh, only to end up with a beautiful sunny afternoon. Let's set up camp, sit down, get off our feet and just take a bit of a breather and just mend our broken hearts with what we just went through. I'm so broken. Yeah, me too. After a defeated day, I do feel all the more better knowing that camp is set up, everything is safe and undercover and ready to cook up a big dinner. We are having pizza tonight, believe it or not, I've said this a few times, you can have pizza on an island. But first, we just want to enjoy the sun while it's still up and we want to get out there and play a few beach games. What do you reckon? Yeah, I reckon that's a good idea, especially after today. We we've definitely stepped out of our comfort zones in a lot of situations today. So just relaxing a little bit and playing some beach games would be the best part of today, I reckon. <laughs> and then fingers crossed, a sunset. Fingers crossed, I think that's the best idea we got. <laughs> <laughs> what? Waking up on the final day of our big adventure, I was not only happy to be going home, but sad to be seeing this adventure come to an end. As much as things kept going wrong, I feel like that you really earn it when things like this do happen, so the good moments were all the more better. But knowing that we had a one and a half hour drive back to Stradbroke, considering how hard it was to get to where we are currently, I was pretty nervous. So we decided to get up at five o'clock in the morning to hopefully get a weather gap where the wind hadn't quite hit 35 kilometers an hour yet and get ourselves to Stradbroke. It wasn't possible to say the least. We only made it to Gutterbar before we had to stop, reset and give our bodies a bit of a break because it was painful the winds that we drove through. Good morning, I'm on the jet ski, the boat is almost out and we are about to do the big voyage to get back home. 
We're in a massive rush to leave. We didn't film packing up camp because it was pissing rain and there is 50 kilometer winds about to hit us in less than an hour and it's an hour and a half ride home. So the, the nerves are very high, especially for the tinny people. Uh, it's way too rough a conditions for tinny to be completely honest. Uh, so time to bunker down on the devices and fight to get home. Hopefully I can film some of it, but honestly at this point safety comes first. Yeah, sorry about that guys. We'll see you on the other side. We set sail in the hope to make it to Stradbroke. We didn't even make it. We had to stop halfway at the south point of Morton Island and take a break on our very sore bodies, but that meant that we were able to go and check out Gutter Bar for breakfast, which I had never done before. And it was actually quite nice. The Red Dirt Christmas Party is here now. Bree's on her way. Brody's on his way too. They have no idea. And anyone at Morton just joins. Yeah, if you're at Morton, come. After our very memorable breakfast at Gutter Bar, the sun had come out and we weren't quite ready to do the actual island hop from Morton to Stradbroke, so we were kind of stalling, but I'm glad we did because when you wrap around, we found this water canal with crystal blue water, mangroves, you could ride jet skis in between it, go scurfing, so we just decided to absolutely milk it. <laughs> Stradbroke and Morton really didn't have my back this weekend, but I know that in a few years I'm going to look back and say that this was one of my most memorable weekends of my 20s. All of NASA's comfort zones were definitely challenged just then, but it was so good to be back. Earning these adventures made it all the more better, and the high moments that we did get to have tasted better because they were well earned and even the hard moments that we had to go through brought us together as a team it made us closer and gave us an appreciation of not every adventure runs perfectly but it's about enjoying the good moments in between and you don't know what the good is if you don't have the bad so it's about getting out there using the gear that you've got and don't waste a single weekend no matter what the weather says get out there and go and enjoy it for yourself long time coming for these words to come out of my mouth but that was definitely the most nerve-wracking and hardest episode I've ever had to work for. We're glad to be safe with all the toys and the cars on the barge making our way home. Thank you so much for tuning in. Nats, thank you for joining me. Thank you for having me. And we will see you guys in the next episode. You do not want to miss the bloopers because if you noticed, a lot of shit went wrong in this episode. So the bloopers are going to be some very good ones. <laughs>
just going to take my time, carry the gear into camp, set up camp, sit down. Holy shit, I wish I could pack a beer. Daniel Gray, cameraman. Absolutely. It's a hard day. Really sick. It's insane. I was so happy to be there. So, um, yeah, don't scratch like that. Okay, yeah, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I'm itchy. I'm itchy. I'm itchy. Okay. That was really, really good. And when I tell you, it felt like that hell had hit earth. Her, hell. When I, what? When I tell you that hell had hit earth, I mean it. Really can't get much worse. <laughs> this is... Have you been camping before, Bridget? <laughs> if someone, if local campers saw us, they'd be like, at least these people, at least they're trying. At least they're having a go, out yeah, there having a go. And then they come and they go, so, so what do you do for a living? Yeah. And I'm like, this. I should do this. I do what this all the time. He's like, oh, Brody. <laughs> What do you mean? What is it to be Brody? Because when you called him Brody, oh, no. oh, Brody, Brody, is it rolling? We're recording. Brody, Brody, listen, listen to don't, me, Brody. Don't worry, Brody. I took it as a compliment to my my camera skills. But when the the cameraman on this trip was holding the camera at me, I was looking down doing my swag, and then he said mentioned something about taking stills, and because I know that we need stills, I was like, hey, Brody, get a photo of this, and then I looked at the cameraman, and it wasn't you. <laughs> But I just, you're always in my mind, in my mind and on my heart. And if someone's holding a camera, I just assume that they're as good as you, which they weren't, so compliment <laughs> to you.